Wireless data. It's what connects us to just about everything. And full power license spectrum is how it gets from point A to point B. Americans will use five times more 5G data by 2027. To make sure all Americans benefit from secure, reliable 5G networks, we need more full power license spectrum. Go to more5gspectrum.com to learn more. October 27th, 1989 will mark 30 years that the Amy Mahalovic case has remained unsolved. Previously on Who Killed Amy Mahalovic? Uh, we originally took the report as a missing person and we have changed it now, uh, acting on the assumption that she may have been abducted. It's a shock. We're a very quiet, uh, safe community. And when something like this happens, it just uh, seems un unbelievable. What went on uh, was a ploy that was developed and carried through, and it looked like a natural uh, action going on. It didn't look out of the ordinary at all. If anybody has seen her get into a vehicle, we need. I think uh, that would help uh, quite a bit. We also have reason to believe that Amy left with that individual from that location and went to another area where they may have gone shopping, and that would be a mall or a shopping center somewhere in the area. We have had thousands of suspects called in to our department. Viewing all her classmates at this time, trying to get as much information as we can relative to what they saw and what they heard her say. Whoever did this was preying on, you know, this little girl and the love of her mother. Early this afternoon, an anonymous caller told the FBI Amy had been dropped off at Euclid Square Mall in front of the Florsheim shoe store. Within minutes, the mall was crawling with police. They searched inside and outside, but no Amy. I just want to, you know, reach out and put my arms around her and give her a hug. My instincts told me the searches wouldn't produce anything. That was just my instincts. I know they had to go through that as a part of the process. We have come to find out there was absolutely nothing regarding choir after school on Friday. Um, I, I don't have any other information. By 6, Margaret Ma called police to report Amy as missing. Tonight, Bay Village parents are keeping a watchful eye on their trick-or-treaters. It's kind of scary to think what happened. I'm glad we have our parents with us. Anybody who knew Margaret well to contact us, there are things that we would love to ask, ask Margaret that maybe Margaret would know. We're hoping that by having people who know Margaret well reach out to us, that we can ask them some of those questions we would, uh, you know, ask Margaret. And rather than not talking about it, we are being extremely open about it. Not that we're uh, TV stars or people that speak in public or anything like that. You just do it because there's part of your life out there that's we need to get back back home. Well, it uh, it certainly isn't what we were all. And every one of you two were hoping for it. The search for Amy has lasted for four months. This picture of the Bay Village girl has been placed in every public place possible with the hope that someone, somewhere, would have information leading to her whereabouts. Go to live to be safe. I think that kind of um, situation hit home with a lot of people. Live in Bay Village, Tracy Carlos, News 5. Hello and welcome to this very special episode of Who Killed Amy Mahalovic. I am your host, Bill Huffman, and this Sunday will mark 30 years that Amy's case has remained unsolved. And on this week's episode, I am joined by Tracy Carlis from News 5, who has covered Amy's case for more than a decade, has close relationships with the Chief of Police, the Bay Village Police, the FBI, and the Mahalovic family. We discuss what it's like to be a reporter and what it's like to report on such tragic circumstances and what it's also like to get to know the family and know how personal a solution or resolution to a case like this could be. So join me this week as I'm joined with Tracy Carlos of News 5 as we break down Amy's case and the 30 years that it has remained unsolved. So please, again, join me for this week's special episode of Who Killed Amy Mahalovic. All right. Well, you have been covering the... You've been in Cleveland for, what, 20 years now? 20 years in June, so almost 20 years. Okay. So you have been covering the Amy Mahalovic case 
pretty regularly for the time that you've been here in Cleveland. What is it about the case that, one, attracts you to covering it, and what has your relationship been with, like, the families and as far as the family and the, uh, you know, working with Chief Spetzel and Torsny and... Well, I, I guess for me, you know, I, I covered this case before I was a mother, after, you know, I'm a mother now. Um, and the one thing that stuck out to me is how evil somebody could be to trick a 10-year-old girl um, by saying, let's go buy a gift for your mother. I mean, what child who loves their mother or their father and their parent gets a promotion at work wouldn't want to make their mother or their father happy by buying them something. And that, to me, is is the um, crux of this case, just how evil somebody would be to think to do that to a 10-year-old child. Um, and the fact that it's been 30 years and they still get tips. You know, um, the police, the FBI, every month, every week, they get tips coming in on this case. So I think that that just goes to show you um, that it hits people right in the heart that somebody could be this cruel and do this to a child and still this killer be on the loose. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably one of the number one things that stands out to me as far as being somebody that grew up in the area and the fact that the guy could be anybody. Right. I mean, it could be your soccer coach, it could be your next-door neighbor, it just could be anybody. And I think that's what keeps everybody so in touch with this case because like the tips do come in right and you know the other thing is um you know, i've covered crime stories for a long time um i come from a law enforcement family and, and typically these people don't do this one time this was probably not the first time he did it or if it was it wasn't the last time that he did it um you know bay village police chief mark spetzel told me that they you know, they canvass the country still today looking for similar cases. Um, so if this person who did this thinks that they've gotten away with it, that they that the police have forgotten about it, that the FBI has forgotten about it, that the family has forgotten about it, they haven't. You know, they have very, very long memories. And I'll tell you, um, Mark Mahalovic is such a kind person um, and the strength that he has. Uh, with this this case is unbelievable. Yeah, and he's really taken kind of since Margaret's not been around since 2000. You know, he's kind of had to be the lead cheerleader as far as uh, keeping the case in the spotlight. And you can tell. I mean, as he's doing as well as you could in the you know with the circumstances that he has, but it's just when you meet somebody like that, I think that really does drive home how personal mm -hmm. this particular abduction was because she was called at home and it was like that's supposed to be a 10 year old's safe is the, the safest place you could possibly right. be is your home right and this person picked up a phone call which was already a that's crime number one decides to call this girl i don't know what the intentions are other than sexually motivated tension you know right. intentions it's mind-boggling. Well, and the, the chief said something to me the other day. He said, you know, we know that there was one call, but that that probably was not it. This person was a very good groomer. Um, and, and I said, well, for somebody that might be sitting at home and not really know what it is you're looking for that you need to put this case together. And he said, somebody that is more comfortable around children of that age. Still not really, you know, kind of socially awkward, um, but more comfortable with children than adults. And, and he said to me, this person is living a normal life, probably, you know, and it's just when you get to know that person, maybe you think, hmm, it's a little strange. Why would that, you know, why would that happen? And I, I was just shocked at the amount of interviews. Uh, I talked to Special Agent Lisa Hack um, for the story that's going to air Friday, and she said just in the time that she has been on this case, which has been about six years, they have still brought in and interviewed between 100 and 150 people. Now, that's within the last six years. They have volumes of information, um, both the FBI and, as you know, Bay Village. Mm -hmm. you know, they have Amy's bike. They have, you know, 
uh, all these people that they have interviewed and cannot rule out. Because unless you have a ironclad alibi of where you were that day, you're not you're not ruled out. And you know, I asked the chief if he, you know, do you have that one person that you you think might have done it, and you're just trying to get that piece of evidence and and he says no, and he said no every single time that I've asked him. Yeah, I've tried to get them to give me a little bit of, you know, journalistic different ways of going about asking that question. Right. And it seems like he just, and he literally just told me when I last spoke to him, it's just not there. We just need a couple more pieces. Right. But it's not like I have the guy in my mind. Right. That it is. And the other thing that we do like to talk about when I do meet with him is that one, he's real open about keeping the case in, in the spotlight. Right. And he does want everybody to know that the people that have been brought out, at least in the media and named, which he is always again, he's not for naming suspects, but he wants everybody to know that they've at least looked into every single one of those people very thoroughly. Right. And to know that this case isn't solved. Well, and it's it's um, interesting because each one of them that I talk to, um, Mr. Mahalovic, the chief, the FBI agent, they all believe that this is very solvable. Um, that it's just because in the way the chief explained it to me was, you know, we have all this information. So we just need a couple more pieces to tie it all together um, and point us in the direction of this this killer. I mean, this person has got, gotten away with this crime for 30 years years. You have, I mean, as you know, the chief was a young, a young rookie, you know, he'd only been on a few years at Mm -hmm. the time. And this case has followed him through his career. He still has that poster of Amy. Yeah, it's sitting sitting in the corner of his office. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely something that hasn't left him. And I, and I think that's good for the case, because I think that a lot of times with, you know, people coming in as chiefs, and this is a smaller police force. So, you know, you do rise through the ranks. The one thing that he emphasized the last time I talked was that he was frustrated with the fact that he wasn't able to get his hands on the case as much right. being the chief of police. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he is retiring. And I did pose the question, are you going to possibly join the Amy task force when you do? Or, you you know, and he, he said if, if the opportunity is there, then absolutely he wants right. to get his hands in there because he's got other responsibilities. You know, and, right? He's he's the chief of the department. He can't work on a case anymore. But he said the very, you know, he said the same thing to me that he would he wants to come back and and try to kind of finish it. But he also said he doesn't care who solves it, just somebody, just somebody solve it. And and they all said, all three of them told me that they believe it is going to be information from the public that's going to solve this. Now, you know, they have DNA, um, but the technology is not there yet. So. In 1989, there was no no DNA technology. And and the forethought that these investigators had back then to preserve DNA when there was no technology for it is is really remarkable to me to think how they were thinking ahead Mm -hmm. into solving this. Yeah, and even taking the dog hairs off the the, the, the family pet, you know, the person that collected that piece of evidence i mean that's 1989 i know harry was kind of new but at the time but it wasn't the technolo- dog hair wasn't yeah, yeah the technology know? wasn't there to connect those things right. but they said well we should at least pull these things together and maybe we'll be able to one day have it right and you know and, and look how look what happened with it right with the blanket and, and that's another thing that they point to you know that's a pretty unique uh curtain that somebody made from a blanket correct and to to find that dog hair on that blanket, on the curtain, um, and then to have it that they could go against from that investigator that clipped the dog's hair. I mean, that ties Amy to that blanket, no doubt. Yeah, it's it's one of those really forward-thinking investigators. And, right. And it's great that they were do, able to do that because literally when I sp- speak to Spetzel, I always talk to him about, what you, you know cuz listeners always want to know why didn't this evidence come out earlier why didn't why did it take 20 years for it to be released and it's like well or 25 it, and the way that the chief always pitched it was we had the FBI in our office the day after i mean it was they were involved you couldn't send a bunch of stuff to the FBI in DC and expect 
them to analyze every single piece of item you know that they that you've collected right. because they didn't have the technology nor the manpower to do so. And you know, and they're also trying to preserve it, right? So with each time you submit that DNA, you lose some of it. So they're trying to preserve it to um, when the technology does keep up that they do have it. And let's face it, cops and investigators are not going to tell you everything that they have and show you everything that they have until they had a reason to do it. Until they linked that dog hair, they couldn't even say that that blanket was linked to Amy. It was just something that they picked up in that field. Exactly. Um, and you know, I'm sure that there is a lot more evidence that they have than we know about. They've let it out a little bit, but yeah. I'm quite sure in those folders and um, boxes and computer stuff that they have, there's a lot more evidence. Yeah, and that's another thing that they've been able to do is that they've been able to use the grant money that they got from the state to build that electronic database of all the tips and all the information that they have taken in because all they have to do now is just type in a name and pull, we'll pull up everything that have has been done on that case right. or on that suspect. And, you know, again, like you said, nobody's 100% ruled out because there is, unless you've got an ironclad alibi, which very few people do, right. and Spetzel emphasizes that, you can't be officially ruled out. But he wants people to know that he doesn't feel like there is that guy that he's, he's waiting on. Right. You, know? Right. you know, and that's, I think that's what, well, that's a little concerning that there could be that many people that are out there that could have the potential to do something like this, is what came to my mind. Yeah, and that's kind of scary. I looked into the same thing. Like when I talked with Torsney, Phil Torsney, um, he had mentioned that, you know, they always are looking at other cases and MOs and stuff like that across the country. And I only found one case from the 80s that even wrecked came any bit close and it was in Toronto and the guy was convicted. So, I mean, it's not something that was very, I mean, it was a very, very brazen move right. to set up a meeting with a girl at a shopping plaza in public across from a police station. Right. And, you know, in, and, and Mr. Mahalovic said something to me that he had never said before. He said, um, Amy, I said, what kind of girl was Amy? And he said, Amy was very shy. Amy would not have gone with somebody that she didn't know, which then brings up, well, how did this adult know her? From where? Where did this person know her from? Um, was it, and, and you've heard the theories, you know, was it work around the house that was being done? Was it uh, a teacher, a coach, a, you know, uh, somebody on the the outskirts that she felt comfortable with? Because let's face it, most of the time when a child is abducted, somehow, that person knows the child and then they groom them um, mm -hmm. and get their trust. And, you know, and then again, that's what's heartbreaking to me is that, you know, you do this to a 10 year old girl getting to her by trying to help her with something for her mother. And, you know, um, I mean, I can only imagine what Margaret felt with that. Yeah. I, I mean, you could see it. I mean, in looking at all the old video of her you know anytime that there was an anniversary or anytime that the you know media would show up for you know a press conference she wore it on her face yeah. and it it has been said before and it's been it'll be said again that she died of a broken heart mm -hmm. i mean she had many other issues but you know losing a child i can't imagine i can't even fathom no so. and you know and it brings up a question um you know you were amy's age when this happened so did that play a role in you being so um, invested in this case? I think it's a great time to take a break and hear from our sponsor, BetterHelp. I've had to deal with my fair share of anxiety and depression in my life, and I'm happy to say that there is now an easy way to get help. Because if there is something that interferes with your happiness or is holding you back from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling is there for you. You can now connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's convenient because it needs to be in our hectic lives. So go get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. BetterHelp really is there for you because they have 3,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states. And guess what? 
If you aren't happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time. There are even apps available for your computer or smartphone. And whether you're suffering from anxiety, depression, anger, stress, relationship issues, sleeping issues, family conflicts, LGBT matters, self-esteem issues, they literally have a licensed professional counselor for you. And of course, everything you share is confidential. The best part is, it's truly an affordable option. Who Killed Amy Mahalovic listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code WHO. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash WHO. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get you matched with the counselor you'll love. Again, for 10% off, go to betterhelp.com slash who. It absolutely did. I mean, I think that's the whole reason why I started this podcast was because of the fact that I was touched by it at a, at a young age, even though I didn't necessarily get scared because I thought I was invincible because I was 10 and I was a boy and I'm like, ah, whatever. Um, but your parents, I'm sure, thought differently. My parents thought differently for sure, because that year we were supposed to go trick or treating by our by ourselves for the first time. You know, we were ten, so it was like, oh, this is our the leash is off, right? And guess what? The leash got put right back on <laughs> I mean, four absolutely. days four days before Halloween. So yeah. it was, it is something that obviously has been a huge part of my life, just because of where I live. I mm-hmm. still am just a few miles from where she was taken. I have gone down to where she was found. It is in the middle of nowhere. And in my opinion, there's absolutely no way that this person just randomly drove to the spot and decided that was going to be the spot. Right. Um, I think that he definitely knew where he was going. And even today, that is a rural place. So imagine it 30 years ago, what it was back then. There was nothing there. I think it's exactly the same as it was 30 years ago. Yeah. There may be one house extra. But yeah, County Road 1181 is a completely desolate. It's a, it's basically a wind field. And that's why when they collected all those items, uh, I think the chief said they collected thousands of items and, you know. And sifting through them. Then, sifting yeah. through them. Yet, and they collected up to... 600 yards away or something along those lines so they didn't know when they first collected the the curtain and the blanket at the time even because it wasn't like those were with amy right they were a quarter mile away or 100 yards away or something like they weren't with the body right so it well, and again that goes to collecting everything that they saw because they didn't know and they have to sift through you know all that information and all, all the pieces of evidence that, that they have. You know, uh, Lisa Hack uh, grew up in Bay Village, um, and she was away at college at the time that this happened, but she came home and, and remembers hanging posters um, of Amy. And now I think that it's just um, what a twist of fate that she is now leading the FBI's portion of tracking down this killer. And, and she said something, you know, uh, interesting. I said, do you think it'll be solved? And she said, yeah, you know, as investigators, we have two choices. We continue to investigate or we don't. And she said, you know, the people that have come before us in this case and the people that will, you know, that are investigating it now, we're not giving up. You know, we, we will get to the bottom of it. Um, and I and, you know, they they're banking a lot on the technology that's coming down the pike for DNA, too. China is making 370% more 5G spectrum available than America. Tell Congress to restore FCC auction authority and allocate more 5G spectrum to make sure America leads the industries and innovations of the future. Go to more5gspectrum.com to learn more. Yeah, Yeah, the way Spetzel explains it is that five years ago, we wouldn't have thought the technology would be where it is today. Think about where it's going to be in five to ten years. And the whole thing about what you mentioned before about not wanting to get rid of the DNA that they have pretty much what I've been told or through the, you know, back channels is that it is a minimal amount. And so they are waiting for that one test that will allow them to use not every single piece that they have, but at least a piece and get an accurate result. Right. And if you, you know, just think about all the the minds that are working on improving DNA technology, you know, um, in 89, who would have thought that the, that the, what's it called? Gene Chrome or whatever uh, that's uh, familial genealogy, like genealogy has taken on a whole new world. I mean, it's, it's a 
cottage industry now. Right. And I mean, but un- unlocking the DNA, who would have thought that would have been done? And then the technology to trace it and figure out who you are. I mean, it's just it it boggles my mind. I'm just a reporter. I mean, when you think about what science can do and, and how they're helping to solve these crimes and, and there's really no, if they have your DNA, it's you. Yeah. You and know? I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on the radio right. or on television, but I would say that if they do get that test and they do get that DNA result back, I mean, we are talking about one of the biggest cases in I always consider this a, one of the most mysterious cases in the whole entire mm, country yeah. because of the fact of the the way it was. Right. And you, you look at it from, okay, back in 1989 and still today when we were in Bay, there's kids that ride their bikes to school. Oh, I, would, I mean, yeah. you know, Bay is a safe community. You can let your kids go out and, and, and walk to school. Um, and so think about how that will, you know, not being from here, I was not in the area at the time, but... Think about how that just rocked the community and shook it to its core that you can't let your kid outside anymore because there is a kidnapper and a killer on the loose. And I mean, you know, if you think about it today, person is either, I think uh, the chief or the FBI agent told me, you know, this person is either um, dead, in jail, or out here with us. And I would say the fact that he's probably not in jail is because of the fact that we don't I mean I don't know I don't yeah I guess the fact he could be in jail because we haven't gotten a full DNA profile I guess that would right. be the reason why he could be in jail but yeah that's uh that's I think it's very important to have people like Lisa especially you know she's a special agent for the yeah special agent for the FBI to have people like that that have a built-in per, connection per, yeah personal interest and same thing with the podcast I mean I think that's if you're invested in it when you when you grow up with it, you know, she hung posters. I saw the posters. I would go shopping with my dad or my mom and, right. you know, you'd see missing. And at school, we were even forced to watch the I vividly recall having watched the segment of Sally Jesse Raphael with Margaret Mahalovic. At school, yeah. like there was a, it was that nobody wanted anybody else to become the next Amy. And if you think about it, that was these these were all like I remember um, Adam Walsh. That was the the case that flipped my mother out and mm. you know my parents, and we were no longer allowed to be you know gone and you know for hours on your bike. Uh-huh. I mean, it kind of changed a kid's world. You know, our daughter is not allowed to have that freedom that. That me and my husband had when we were kids. Because, yeah, even I had. I mean, right? I, I lived in Rocky River and it's very similar demographics to Bay. It's very safe, very, right. um, you know, ride your bike to war, uh, school type of thing. We would hang out at the in the woods, as we called them. Yeah. Um, and you just to think about if I, if I saw like a 10 year old kid down there now, I would think this is odd. Right. <laughs> Whereas like, right. I was just, that was like our, that was our life. It was our Back background. Then, yeah. Or that was our backyard basically. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, and the way chief Spetzel says now is that, you know, nobody's going to use the telephone anymore. They're going to use the internet. Right. So all we've done is he's like, just think about all the information that is out there now. So you have to be as a parent, you have to be so diligent. Exactly. And I, I'm not a parent, and I'm so I can't say I know exactly how that feels. But as a parent, I mean that changes things, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, and I, um, as I said, I come from a law enforcement family, so I'm already, you know, my my spidey senses are already up. So our our daughter has a very unhappy childhood. She is not allowed to do <laughs> to do anything. <laughs> Poor kid. Um, but it does. It You know, these stories change you because, you know, you think about it. And, and not just me and not just you. It changed a community. It changed the whole – it changed all of Northeast Ohio, yeah. in my opinion, because it was – Amy became part of the whole city. It wasn't just Bay Village. It wasn't just the west side. It was – she was – I mean, it was on the news every day. Well, and what's interesting is, um, you know, Mr. Mahalovic told me that uh, within 
like an hour of her being missing. Mm -hmm. um, somebody took posters to television stations, and it was on that night. Yep. And, you know, there were an abundance of law enforcement and FBI agents that lived in Bay Village. So you had this immediate group of people that had the wherewithal to get involved immediately and start looking. So, you know, but it would be in the chief, and I talked about this too, it would be a different case today. You know, if this were to happen today, one, do you know how many cameras are around constantly in that Bay Bay Shopping Center and, oh, yeah. and leading up to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would have video evidence. You would have digital footprint. Di exactly. You could, you know, get their phone. You could, you know, trace the phone. It would be a totally different case today than it was 30 years ago. And I think that's what makes it frustrating for somebody like us, you know, people who are invested in the case in the sense that you – it only took another five years, six years before the technology was there to trace phone calls and to star 69 and right uh, right yeah you I, were so we were so close I, back then right, right so close and i even had the chief explain how he solved a circumstantial case that occurred in 2000 or 2001 with you know with phone records and i said to him isn't this ironic that we're talking about a, a case that you solved and it was just 10 years after the fact basically that if you would have had that information, you could have had Amy's case solved right. that weekend. And you never know. You don't know. And you don't know. You don't know what goes on in somebody's mind, in somebody's house, in somebody's um, neighborhood. And as parents, I mean, it makes you a little cray cray, right? I mean, you, you just have to to think about that and and hope that someday... The, the family that is so very, very kind and welcoming to the media gets some kind of, of closure because, look, you know, he, Mr. Malovic is not comfortable doing this, mm -mm. but he knows that he has to do it um, to, keep, to keep it out there. And, and the same with the chief. You know, the chief over the years, I'm sure you've seen it, has become more comfortable with talking to us. But he also realizes they're smart. They realize that it, it has to be that one person that, Here's this podcast or reads my story on the Internet or sees it that says, you know, I've been thinking about it. I, maybe I better call and maybe they hold the key. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's it's one of those things. Just like you said, the public is going to be the one that brings this case to a close. And I can only imagine that with the technology improving the way that it is at the pace that it is that we will find an answer sooner rather than later. I don't think it's going to be another 30 years before we find an answer. I think it will be sooner again, sooner right. rather than later, because of the fact that technology is just moving at such a rapid pace. Right. And, you know, in stories that you think will never have an ending, I mean, and I, I think back to the three girls, you know, Gina and Amanda mm -hmm. and Michelle. Right. Um, another case that I had covered for years and... Um, just when you think that you're never going to have a conclusion, you do. And so you never know. you know, somebody's coming out of the door. And... Yeah. Because somebody is always, not in that, you know, in that case, too, they were always working on it. And the FBI will tell you any missing case that they have that involves a child is never closed. So, again, I go back to this person may think that they got away with murder, but... Can you imagine there's somebody always looking over your shoulder? Like what that person must be, the life that person must be living to, to know that you've got a team of investigators, that that's all they do is try to figure out who you are. You yeah, know? carrying that burden has got to be unimaginable. Yeah. And I cannot wait for the day yeah. that he is actually in cuffs and brought in front of a judge and held accountable. And you, you wonder if he hasn't talked that's an awful big thing to carry around for 30 years that you haven't said anything to anybody. And those people that you may have said something to, that's who needs to understand that you may not feel comfortable doing that. And you can be anonymous. Right. You can turn in a right. tip and say, hey, I think this he mentioned something to me that sounded very like he shouldn't have known it. And it can be anonymous. Right. You just. Call Crime Stoppers. Call Crime Stoppers, again. And the FBI is offering a reward. I mean, it, there yeah. is 
a reason to turn this guy in. I mean, if you have any bit of information, it, again, like the authorities say, the public is going to be the ones that bring this case to a, a solution or a resolution. And I just hope those people understand if they are carrying that information around that they should unburden themselves because it's not their problem. It's, right. the, other, it's the person who committed the crime. Right. And but, then you, you, you also think that, like I said, they they think that he had either a past of doing this or continued to do it in some form. I mean, the elderly and the children, how do you do that? How right. do you how do you hurt somebody like that? I, I, I don't understand. And and I would hope that they would they would come forward and say, hey, you know, it might not be anything, but here's what I know. Yeah. So at 30 years, you know, we can uh, we can wrap this up at 30 years. What, what do you uh, you've been covering for what, 20 now? Like I said, it'll be I'll be in Cleveland uh, next June, 20 years. So um, I would say probably for half, if not probably safe, have to say half of my time here has been this story. Um, and there's nothing more I would like than to see this person brought to to trial and justice and and give the give her family you know some answers that they yeah. have been wondering about for 30 years yeah i i can't agree with you more and and there's no family that deserves it more than the the mahalovics no. and especially with so the kind. way that they're so kind yeah they're so kind and they're so open to to the media and allowing you into their home and you know if i mean I, I, when i would go over there they would be make sure I was fed. It was right, <laughs> right. Well, that, you know, the photographer that I'm with today, Brian, they wouldn't let us leave till he ate. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, so, it's, and, you it's know. A, it's a Mahalovic thing. And, and if you think about, you know, how some people treat us when we have to do these stories, and that that's another thing. If people think that we like knocking on doors and asking these questions, we, do, I mean, I don't. It's my job. And, you know, sometimes I, I you know, I leave there and, and you know, you're in tears and you cry and, and some people are not very nice to you, and I totally get that because they are at a you know very traumatic time in their life, and I understand. But the kindness that you know Mr. Mahalovic and, and his wife um, have shown to us, I'm so very grateful. Yeah, and I, I do I do think that was important thing for you to mention about how it is uncomfortable to, to go and sure. knock on these doors. I yeah. mean, this isn't something... I mean, And it's ever, still uncomfortable to talk to him about it today. It, I agree, 100%. Even when I... Yeah, it's... It's it's the hardest part of being a journalist is going to those, to, to those doors and knocking on those doors and having those tough conversations. And it's it's not like... We enjoy it. No, you have a pit in your stomach. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm knocking on the door, I'm saying, oh, God, please don't let them be home today. You know, it's because I don't want to do it. But unfortunately, I have a job to do. And hopefully we can do some good. And that's what I that's that's how I kind of justify it is. OK, well, maybe we can do some good. Maybe somebody will hear me or see my story or listen to your podcast that will strike something with them that will have them come forward. Well, I think that's exactly why it's good to have the podcast and have you covering the stories and keep, you know, it is a public service that we're doing to a degree. I mean, we are providing information to the public trying to find a killer. We're not sensationalizing anything. We're not making right. anything more than it is. This is a tragic story of a girl who was kidnapped and murdered. Right. And a community wants resolution. And I don't, just don't see how... If you know something, please, it's time. Yep. So, Tracy, thank you so much for oh, joining me today. Oh, thanks for having today. me, Bill. And, uh, and our, so so your podcast airs on Friday night. Yeah, our, I, our story airs Friday night and then again Sunday. So, awesome. And uh, I will, since this podcast will actually come out before your story will air, because this will air on Friday, Friday night. At 11, yeah, I believe. So yeah, so this will come out. Friday, Friday at twelve a.m. Oh, so in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I will pr I will promote your story as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, Thank that's you. Just you know, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So well, thanks, thanks so much. Having... Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Many thanks to Tracy Carlos from News Five for joining me this week. And thank you again for listening to this very special episode of Who Killed Amy Mahalovic. 
I am again your host, Bill Huffman. I will have one more episode to mark the 30-year anniversary of Amy's case remaining unsolved. I'll be lucky enough to be joined by Nick from the True Crime Garage podcast. And if you've listened to this podcast before, you know he's got incredible insights into this case. And I really hope you tune in. And I think I will drop that on Sunday, the anniversary. If you enjoy this independently produced podcast, please help support the show by clicking on the donate button on the bottom left or right on whokilledamymahalovic.com or via the Venmo app with my username at BillHuffman3. Any amount is appreciated, and it does help keep this show running. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. It will help support the show, and it does help keep Amy's story in the spotlight. If you'd like to stay up to date on the cases that I've covered and the new shows in the pipeline, please follow me on Twitter at BillHuffman3. If you have any new information, I beg you to contact the Bay Village Police Department at 440-871-1234. The FBI is still offering a reward of up to $25,000 for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the individual or individuals responsible for the death of Amy Renee Mihaljevic. Anyone with information concerning this case, please contact the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI. You can always remain anonymous by contacting Crime Stoppers. Thank you again so much for listening, and until next time, be safe. Have you ever wondered about things that go bump in the night, or objects in the sky, or other things you just couldn't explain? Then join me, Jim Mallard, on my podcast, The Mallard Report. Each week, you'll find engaging conversations with guests who are authors, historians, and scholars who lend their expertise as we discuss current events and venture into the fringe and paranormal. The Mallard Report hits controversies head-on, yet remains conversational, and can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any other major podcast platform. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly, and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.